Hello, 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 friends. Welcome in. I feel like I have never done a live on a Sunday night, guys. But welcome, welcome. Grab your snack. Make sure you get your juice or your tea, like I say on the newsletter. Get comfy because it's time to talk. And tonight, we're talking all things money, okay? All things money because, honey, we're leaving money on the table and we don't got time for that. We don't got time. So make sure you grab your snack. You get all comfy on the couch. Make sure you introduce yourself. Say hey when you come in. Hello, hello, hello. Um, Because I am using a streaming service. So um, I am not on YouTube itself. So when you come in, drop a hi in the chat so I can acknowledge you as you come in. We're going to get started in a couple more minutes because I don't want to delay, especially for those who are watching the replay because y'all tap this link for a reason. And so we're going to give the gems and I don't want to take all night. And I also am ready to go chill out. So we're not going to be here too long. We're not going to be here too long. Um, I also want to do a live hot seat um so for those who are here and maybe you have some questions about your specific gifts that you are trying to monetize and so if that is you I'm going to invite you on the stage um to just talk about again your gifts you don't have to have your camera on or anything like that but um to just talk through you know your gifts and monetizing your gifts and let's create a plan so that when we go into quarter two we can do just that okay so again, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, and then, you know, as people come in, of course, the replay will be available. Y'all be able to tune back in. So, hey, friends. Happy Sunday. Um, this is my first time actually doing something like this. Hey, Brandy Groom. This is my first time actually doing something like this on YouTube Live. A lot of the times I am doing series or just going live on Instagram. Um, And so this is me transitioning to a new platform. And so, yeah. Um, And I also usually do them in the morning, but it's 9 p.m. at night. So let's get into it. Let's talk business. Okay. So first things first, if you do not know who I am, I am Demai Unique. Okay. I am your multi-passionate, purpose-pushing, visionary friend. Okay. That's who I am. All right. And I am a full-time entrepreneur. I've been in entrepreneurship for going on three years, but I've always been entrepreneurial. I literally had like so many different businesses starting at the age of 10. Um, And yeah, like that's just been me, right? I always envision myself being this woman with some high heels and her clipboard. Mind you, I can't walk in high heels. So, you know, usually those are my high top gym shoes and my digital iPad. Okay. That, that, that's what it's turned into in the year of 2024. Um, and also let me know if you cannot hear me or if you can hear me. Okay. Because again, we're trying a new mic setup. Okay, we're doing a lot lot of new things here. But anyway, that's a little bit of who I am. Um, And honestly, I decided to do this particular video live simply because I feel like a lot of the times this is as creatives and visionaries and entrepreneurs, this is our biggest struggle. And that's monetizing our gifts. And it's so crazy because all last week I was literally discussing this with like creative friends and my community and different things like that. And I was just letting them know sometimes as creators, because this is what our gifts are and this is what we are passionate about. A lot of the times we get so lost in that passion and in the dream and then, you know, um, the gift itself that when it comes down to monetization, that's not always at the forefront of our mind. Um, And I think that's honestly the biggest struggle um, of creatives. However, money can be made, okay? And money is being left on the table And I also know I'm talking to, and again, let me know in the comments when you come in the room, I see three people here say hello in the, um, 
the comments um and then also let me know if you're also a big dreamer i want to know for those who are here those who are tuning in even if you are watching the replay i want to know if you are the friend with a big dream because that's who i want to talk to as well tonight because that is me friend i am the friend with the big dream right like i am the friend that's going to dream big and i'm going to encourage you to dream big okay i i have learned over and over not to continue to play small, especially when the vision and the dream that God has given to you, your imagination, right? But sometimes because of our current predicament or our current circumstance, a lot of the time we don't think it's possible. And on Wednesday, just so crazy, this past newsletter, we talked about it is possible, right? Money can be made from your gifts. You can make money from doing what you love to do. And what I love about our generation and, and the year that we are living in is just so crazy. It's it, You're seeing every single day, right? Regular smuggler people with a dream or with a gift or with a talent are able to now monetize because guess what? They're leveraging these resources and these things that are available in our time, right? That wasn't available back then. Um, and so, again, that's why I wanted to have this conversation tonight, because a lot of the times we have these big dreams and we have these gifts and we have these talents. But a lot of the times we're sleeping on our gifts. Right. We're too afraid to step out. We're too afraid to charge somebody. Come on, because I know. How do I know this? Because the Maya unique herself. Right. Struggled when it came down to charging someone. And it came down to, do you know your value? Do you know your worth? Do you know what you bring to the table? And if somebody can charge for what you are doing, then you can do it too. If people have questions and they're looking to you and they're always reaching out to you, excuse me, then you can charge as well. And so again, that's kind of what built up to where we are today and the reason why I want to have this conversation excuse me, why I want to have this conversation, because a lot of the times as creatives, visionaries, entrepreneurs, right, we have big dreams and we also have gifts and talents that we can monetize and we can leverage on the way to the big dream. And that's what I want to talk about today. Right. And so, again, for those who do not know who I am, those who are coming in, I am to my unique, your multi-passionate, purpose-pushing, visionary friend. And we are here to talk about you can make money from using your gifts. We're here to talk about how to monetize, how to monetize your gifts, how to do what you love to do. And I want to talk to y'all specifically about your gifts. Like, I don't want to just sit here and talk at y'all. That's why I literally did this live, because I want y'all to come on stage or put it in the comments and, and give me give me a little in, insight of where you are so we can give you a game plan. OK, so first things first, I just want you to know that you're not alone. OK, I literally didn't even think that my gifts were valuable, let alone monetizable. And y'all don't learn. I make up words all the time. OK, but what I realized being in business for three years. Right. So, again, I said I was always entrepreneurial. So growing up. Right. I had um, a candy store. You know, I had different types of businesses like that. So in that type of business where it was more so like a product based business in that particular realm, what was happening was people was paying for a specific item. Right. But then now being a creative or a, a visionary or a dreamer who is trying to make money off of a skill or a service or, or your intellect, right? Being a creative like that and now trying to monetize a gift or a skill or a talent. And so again, I've always been entrepreneurial, but the, the type of business was different. And so in this specific example where I have been for the last three years, right? I have ran boot camps. I have, you know, built curriculum. I have, you know, offered brand building services. I have done, you know, uh, workshops and events and all of those different things, right? And so again, where I've been in these last three years is more so focusing on leveraging my gifts, 
right? And so I've been able to become a full-time entrepreneur and again, a profitable entrepreneur because I live off of this, right? This is the income that I live off of. And I always say, I show up to show you that if I can do it, you can do it too. Okay, you can embrace who you are. You can embrace what your purpose is. You can embrace what your passions are and you can walk in your purpose. You can monetize your gifts. Okay, you can do it because guess what? I didn't believe I could. Right. I was a little girl with a big dream that just didn't feel like it was possible for me. Right. And so that is why I am showing up today. Okay. now. Like I said before, my gifts were my brain. It was how I think. It was how I could visualize. It was how I could organize scattered ideas into a full, complete thought. Okay. And so the first years of my business, first three years of my business, I made a living off of my brain. Right. I made a living off of my brain. I made a living off of my teaching gift. I made a living off of my writing gift. I made a living off of my design gift. I made a living off of my marketing skills and, and my planning skill. You know, what I'm, are you hearing me? I made a living off of that. So I want to teach you that if I can do it free, Free. You can do it too. And I'm the girl with the multiple passions. Okay. I'm the girl with the big vision. Okay. Things are over here, over here, moving all just all over the place. If you, if you ask me now, I've learned, okay. I've learned how to properly carry the multiple responsibilities and the multiple passions. And we're going to get into that a little later, but today I want to talk about how to monetize your gifts. Okay. So I have a whole little strategy here that I'm going to walk you through. I'm going to walk you through. It's six things that I want to walk you through. And then I want to open up the floor because, again, I want to talk to all four of you. And it's four of you. And that's the thing that I love, too. Like, I love wanting to reach the masses and all of those things. But I also love a small group. OK, because that means everybody here can be seen Everybody here can be heard. So what I don't want you to do is come in this room and leave the same way you came. Okay, friend? That's what I want you to do. I, and I want you to um say, I hear you in the comments. So say, I hear you in the comments. Because I do not want you to come into this room with leaving money on the table because you gift it, right? You have gifts, you have skills, you have wisdom, you have insight. You have so much on the inside of you. Everything you need is on the inside of you. So what I don't want to happen is for you to come into this room in the state that you were, right? Leaving money on the table and then leave this room the same way. So I want you to put in the comments, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Okay. I want you to really leverage this time here. OK, because one thing about it, I'm an open book. The questions like let's walk, let's walk through what your gifts are. And, and different ways that you can monetize your gifts because there's money to be made. And I know sometimes, sometimes whether you're a believer or whether you're creative, sometimes when it comes down to money, we don't want to talk about it. And a lot of the times it's because of our mindset around money, right? It's because of how we manage our money. But that's why we really have to work on building our money mindset. And I'm not just saying this just to say this because, Fran, I'm talking to me too, right? Like just for some context, I grew up in a single parent home with black independent women. OK, and we did we, we didn't we didn't have we weren't rich. You know, we weren't middle class. Let's just say it like that. We weren't middle class. OK. And so when it comes down to money, sometimes we were taught Rob Peter pay pop. OK, you know what I'm saying? However, those different types of mindsets, when it comes down to walking as, you know, a, 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 a girl boss and a business woman and, you know, wanting to actually scale and actually touch money that our family has never touched before. 
It's going to take a new mindset around money. And the first hurdle we got to jump is being able to talk about money. Okay. Being able to talk about it because a lot of the times we go into business, right? Or even ministry, whatever the case, whatever we are building, even though it takes money to run, to run the world. Sometimes we just, that's something we just want to push to the side or put, throw under a rug. Right. That, that's not top of our mind. We don't go into starting a business like, oh, oh, how much money can I make? Sometimes we put that on the back burner. But tonight, I want to bring that to surface. Let's talk money. Because it's good to have a balance. I always say that you never want to operate on, on extremes. You don't want to be this money hungry person. Right. This greedy person. But you also don't want to be this person that's always giving and giving and giving. The Bible tells us even to give with simplicity, right? So you don't want to be giving without wisdom. Because I don't know who is here tonight needs to know everything you need is on the inside of you. So to get out of the, whatever place you are in, maybe you got bills that's due. Maybe you got, you know, you, you really want to make a job. For a living out of your gifts, because this is what God is showing you to do. Right. But you're looking at it and you like, hold on, because this is inconsistent income. This is not like going to clock in to a nine to five. And a lot of the times it's because just like how we go pick jobs, not only do we want to know, is it a part of our purpose or is it a part of our passions? We also are calculating how much exactly you about to pay me. Because they gotta be enough. You know what I'm saying? We go into jobs like that. If you had two jobs on the table and both were your passions, both were a part of your purpose, what what would be the what, how would you choose between the two? You gonna say, mm, which one paying me more? Which, which one which one is the better offer? Right. And so that's the same mentality that we have to have going into entrepreneurship, right? Even going into ministry, nonprofits need money to function. Okay. So I really want y'all to hear me. It's time to talk about money. It's time to talk about money. So number one, let's talk about it. Number one, strategy. Six, again, I'm gonna give you six things. Number one, you have to start by first acknowledging your gifts. So before we talk about money, let's, let's pull out the gifts. And as I'm talking, I really want y'all to write these things down because I told you, I told you that we are going to have some open floor coaching, live hot seat coaching. Y'all can come on stage. You know, sometimes, you know, y'all be like, uh, uh-uh, uh, I, I ain't cute. You better throw that hat on, girl. I have to throw that hat on because this hair is like three weeks old. It's itchy. I got dandruff. All right. But listen, we're just here to conversate. Okay. Get what you need. Listen, sometimes we be worried about how we look. Get what you need. Okay. So six things. Number one, I want you to do this as we're talking. Number one, acknowledge your gifts. I want you to write down what are you good at? What are you good at? Write it down. What are you good at? And I don't just want you to think about like those, you know, visual gifts. Like sometimes people just think about like, oh, singing and different things like that. Like I also want you to think about like how you think, right? Like any skills that you have, any interests that you have, what are you good at? And I'm not saying what are you the best at? Because here's the thing. We can always learn. We can always grow. I just want you to think about and write down. I always tell y'all to keep some notes, keep a notebook, Okay. Get your phone, iPad, piece of paper. And I want you to write down, what am I good at? What are some interests of mine? What are some passions of mine? I want you to write those things down. Okay? Write those things down because it starts here. You have to first and foremost, like in order for us to really utilize our gifts and leverage our gifts, we have to start identifying it. That's why it takes sitting down with you. Sometimes our eyes are always focused on everybody else's lane. We see, you know, them thriving in content creation. We see them doing this, them doing that, this and the third. And sometimes we sign up for things only because we see what they doing. It's not in alignment with us. It's not a, it's not a God idea, right? It's just a good idea. No, we want God ideas. 
And we do that by taking time to be still and look at us. Not what everybody else is doing. But look at us, because we need to make sure that we have a plan, right? Not that we're following somebody else's plan, because somebody else could be doing content creation for a bigger goal, right? That could just be a stepping stone. And that's what I really want to help you today to see that sometimes you're looking at other people's lane, right? Like for me, I do content creation, but that's not my big goal. That's not my big dream. My big dream is not to be an influencer, right? Where you see other content creators showing up, their big goal may be to be an influencer, to do brand partnerships. Oh, that's not my goal, right? Am I good at creating content? Absolutely. Do I know how to edit? Do I know how to, you know what I mean? Pitch. Do I know how to do all of these things? Absolutely. I could do it. But is that my big dream? No. Right? I understand what, what brand I'm trying to build. I understand why I'm showing up and, and what this small piece of the puzzle play into the greater, greater, you know, scheme of things, into my big plan. This little plan is playing into my big plan. You get what I'm saying? So I want you to acknowledge your gifts. I want you to understand what you are good at. And just like I just was talking about, I also want you to think about like, what is your big plan? And I just want you to take a second. What do you really want? And it's so crazy because just so, just to be real vulnerable, because I, I, I'm going, I told you I'm an open book. Just to be real vulnerable, it's so crazy because the Lord asked me that the other day. He said, what do you want? And sometimes, again, our struggle, especially for me, right? I grew up like you make it happen on your own, right? That, that's, what I, that's, what I was, that's what I was taught. So I had to really sit down and sit back and, and really think about what do I want? What is my big dream? And it's okay to have desires. It's okay to have a dream. It's okay to have wants. Because sometimes, I mean, we ain't going to veer off to the left. I'm trying to stay on to these six bullets. But I really want you to think about that as well. Because sometimes as believers too, we feel like, oh, I can't ask for my wants because, you know, the Lord already got a plan for my life. So I'm going to just, you know, I ain't going to ask. I'm going to just. And it's like, no, it's, it, he, it's not like that. He don't operate like that. He's a father. Right. And just for, the, for my mama's in here or my, 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 my dad's in here. Y'all know when y'all take y'all kids to the store, you got a, a plan. Right. And this was this was an example that was given to me. You got a grocery list. But if your child say, oh, mommy, can I have I mean, you may say no. But you may consider their wants. You know what I'm saying? Same thing like God. Okay. Anyway, that's number one. Acknowledge your gifts. What are you good at? Then also along with that, what do you want? What are your desires? What are you trying to build? Right? What is the vision? Sometimes we're too scared to, to dream big. What is the vision? Okay, you want to do content creation. What's after that? Because I'm here to tell you, I'm here to pull. I'm here to push. It ain't just content creation. What do you want? What do you want to build? Don't just settle because everybody else doing content creation. Leverage it, right? That's what we're here to talk about. Diversify, leverage, but it don't stop there. So I want you to first and foremost think about what are you good at and what do you want? That's, that's number one. What are you good at? What do you want? And I'm going to slow down so y'all can get it. And I'm going to put it in the chat. What are you good at? And what do you want? Once y'all got that, say got it. Got it in the comments. I'm going to take a little snack break. Because y'all can talk until we at the end. And I'm trying not to speak. That's why I want to do this live. For those who don't know, boom chicka pop. They need to sponsor me at this point because it's so good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, Marky got it. All right. Everybody else, y'all got it. Danita got it. All right. So, again, what are you good at and what do you want? What do you want? That's number one. Let me see. Maybe two more got it and we can move on. Yeah, okay. India. 
I also seen your comment from before. You said definitely a dreamer. I know that I have many gifts, but not sure if I should present myself as a as niche specific girl. I love that. I hope you get on this live hot seat coaching so we could talk about that. Because girl, forget the niche. Okay. All right. So we got three audits. We got seven of y'all in here. So hopefully y'all got it too. Number two. So again, after you have acknowledged what you are good at and what you want, number two, now we want to think about what type of jobs that you can do to utilize your gifts. So once you think about what you're good at, what could you utilize your gifts doing? Like what are different things that you could do? So again, I talked about how when you understand the big plan or, or where you really want to go, you are then able to see your current place or your current status as a stepping stone to where you want to go. You know what I'm saying? And I think this is what I've been learning along my journey is the fact that you don't have to rush, right? A lot of time, a lot of us here maybe are in our 20 somethings, right? You don't have to rush. This is your career path. This is your journey, right? Whether you 30, 40, whatever the case may be, right? You can go at the pace that God has set for your life. So what I want you to really think about, again, you have this big plan of what you ultimately want, but now we want to go all the way down to the bits, the small bits. And we want to think about what jobs could you do that are utilizing your gifts and can be a stepping stone to the bigger vision. That's what I want you to think about. Identify those types of jobs. So example, right? If I had a writing gift, I could start a blog. I could write a book, right? If I had a, um, I could, I have the skills of knowing how to create content. I have a marketing degree, right? I could do UGC, Right. And it's so crazy. Again, this whole week, I've been talking about diversifying your gifts, leveraging your gifts and all of those things. So for me, I'm good at content creation. Right now, especially with the new trends and all the things that's going on, UGC can be a stepping stone for me. Do I want to did I always aspire like, oh, you know what I want to be UGC creator? No. But can I utilize this? So one, practice and perfect the gift that I have, right? The skill set that I have. Can I do that? Absolutely. And guess what? I can get paid while doing it. It's another stream of income, right? Because that another stream of income can then funnel into the bigger dream. What this is doing, and I'm going to put it in the various, very simplest terms I can put it in. What this is doing when you are leveraging and diversifying your gifts, you're then able to buy yourself time. Where you don't feel like you have to rush and put something together and, and launch it, right? Because you're trying to make a dollar. So then what happens is because you are leveraging your gift, because our gifts are multifaceted, right? That same gift that know how to write, can write a book, can write a blog, can, can write people's uh, copy for their websites. Like it can do all of these different things. Of course, you still wanna make sure it's in alignment to where you wanna go. You don't wanna do something like, you know, something that you're not even interested in, right? I mean, sometimes that may be the case, but it's still, again, stepping stones. Right. Before I was a full time entrepreneur, I actually started basically as someone market, someone's marketing assistant. Excuse me. Was it fully a, a, a foreshadow of what I was going to do in my business? No, because in my business, I'm, I'm coaching. I'm running um, boot camps. I, I'm, I'm teaching. You know what I mean? I'm creating content, all of those things. But it still was a stepping stone for me because I was able to sit under a CEO I was able to actually work my marketing skills, right? I was, I was able to grow and learn design. There were different things that I could pull from that experience. You know what I'm saying? And I was doing that. I was working that consistently every single week. I was working that job every single week until, I want you to follow me, I was working this while using my marketing skills 
until my business, my dream got, you know, grown enough, okay, where I can now live off of it. Do y'all see what I'm saying? So I leveraged my gift and I took advantage of this opportunity that was presented to me, actually created for me, because that's how my God works, okay? It was created for me. My, my business did not even exist when I started this, right? But while I sat here and I worked here and I, I, I worked my gift here, okay, I used this to deposit into my dream. I'm trying to tell y'all how it worked. I used this opportunity to deposit into my dream until it was big enough to sustain Okay, so again, number two, I want you to identify the different types of jobs that you can utilize your gifts within. And it doesn't mean that you have to go sign up for a nine to five. It could be more so on the freelancing side. Right. That's where you get um, UGC and all of those things. It could be more so you're still working for yourself. Right. It's just you have to then go see what's available. Sometimes you don't even know the types of jobs that you could do with your passions and with your gifts. That's why I'm starting with you. I'm starting with you thinking about what do you want? What are you gifts? What are you what, what are your gifts? What are you good at? And then let's see what are the different types of opportunities. Right. Don't start with the opportunities because then you're going to sign up for anything and everything. Because you like, oh, I got bills to pay. That's the first thing that's on our mind, right? And so that, those are the first two things. Again, once you got it, right, got it. I'm trying to give y'all visuals. So let me know if y'all following. And then we're going to go to the third thing. And again, we're, we're talking about how to monetize your gifts. Sorry, y'all, if I'm smacking in y'all ear. Just give it a mukbang. Put got it in the comments once you got it so I can move forward. And again, once you come in, please say hey, okay? Because I see it's nine people in here. We jumping. And also get y'all questions prepared because I want to talk to y'all. I said that. Um, don't forget. I don't want to say, all right, we're going to do a little live hot see, and then nobody, you know, nobody um, got no question. Okay. All right, put got it in the chat, and we'll move forward. <coughs> all right, y'all. Uh, we got two got it. <clears throat> Two got it. So we got 10 people in here. Let's get at least five and then we'll move. Two got it. <clears throat> Again, we are talking about how to monetize your gifts. So number one, acknowledging your gifts. What are you good at? Number two, identify the types of jobs that you can utilize with your gifts within, as well as what do you want? What do you want? What's the big dream? What's the bigger picture? What's the bigger picture? We need three more guidance, friends. Three more. And then I promise we're going to go to number three. All right, we got three, four. One more. All right. Thank you, Zakia, bro. Thank you. Okay. Number three, solve a problem and bridge a gap. I always talk about that. I highly use the strategy called bridge method, which is finding a gap, finding a gap, finding a lane that nobody is in. And so number three, when it comes down to monetizing, you always want to bridge a gap. You want to find um, a, a problem, right? That somebody else is not solving. Um, and somebody could, of course, be doing what you're doing, but essentially you want to find your lane, right? 
So for example, <clears throat> the McDonald's and uh, Chick-fil-A and um, Wendy's, right? These are all in the same industry, right? These are all in the fast food industry. The problem that they solve is people don't want to cook, right? People don't want to cook. They want convenient food. Is it healthy? They don't care about that because that's not the problem they're trying to solve, right? They are trying to solve a problem. However, all of these restaurants are in, <coughs> y'all, the popcorn gets stuck. All of these restaurants are in the same industry. However, they solve and cater to a different gap, okay? McDonald's, they, they just own a cheaper end, right? Like they, they just own this, the cheaper end. They worried about getting you convenient food for, for the love. Okay. They don't care about experience. They don't care about none of that. Right. Did they know, they know what problem they solve. Now Chick-fil-A, they like, yeah, our food may not be the healthiest, but it's still convenient. You're going to get a good experience. You're going to pay a little bit more. The quality is better than McDonald's. Okay. So again, when it comes down to monetizing your gifts, you want to understand what problem you are solving. So again, at first we were talking about you, right? What do you want? What are you good at? What type of jobs could you know you utilize your gifts within, right? Those were what we were talking about. But now we want to think about your audience. What problem are you solving? Who are you targeting, right? Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if somebody else is, is an influencer, right? Do you know how many influencers there are? Do you know how many content creators there is? However, every the, the difference is the individual, their personality, how they talk, how they edit, right? And so a lot of the times what, what discourages us from monetizing our gifts is because we're looking at somebody else and we like, oh, this lane is already occupied. Well, I'm here to tell you today that we need you okay and you can be making money from your gifts so now the question isn't or, or the focus isn't oh somebody else is already doing it I, I i'm not needed the question is what problem can i solve what gap can i be a bridge for and that's why you got to get specific right we're not talking about no surface level stuff OK, I, we're not talking about on surface level stuff. So we're not saying, oh, like, you know, I just want to help moms. What type of moms? Right. Like, what are you helping moms do? Um, why can't a mom go to a therapist? Why should a mom come to you? OK, like, you know what I mean? Why can't they go to their pastor? Why? Why should they come to you? What specifically can you give them that nobody else can give them? Right. Like, you know what I mean? Whether that's a good experience, whether that is, you know, that your ebook is different from their ebook because it got a video in it or, you know, whatever the case may be. That's what you have to think about. That's why you have to start getting specific. And that's why I, I literally, I am the type of person like, I'm going to keep asking you why and okay, why and, and why? Because we got to get to the deeper part. You know what I'm saying? Like to really set yourself apart. OK, so number three, you want to solve a problem and bridge a gap. So that's what I want you to think about right now. What problems can you solve with your gifts? What problems can you solve with your gifts? What gap can you bridge with your gift right now? We're not talking about the big dream. Again, you got the big plan where you want to go. And I'm going to give you an example while you writing this down. Because I'll be giving y'all time so you know, right, and think, okay, why well, I'm also giving you an example. So if you got to come back and watch the replay, you could come back. Okay. But an example. So like for me, right, in my, this big plan, right, I have a multi-figure, multi-dimensional brand that is part personal brand mixed with a little coaching, mixed with a little network, you know what I'm saying, mixed with the products and all the things, Okay. So I'm basically like an example is PNG. I'm being very vulnerable about my, my whole my whole big dream right now. OK, if I was to give you the full details, honey, we would be sitting here till midnight. But anyway, think PNG, right? PNG, they got, you know, the dishwashing liquid. They got tied. They got all these different brands underneath PNG. That's Demaya unique. OK, baby. That's that's me. If I was to give you an example, that's it. All right. So 
Me knowing the big plan, the big dream where Demaya Unique wants to go and Demaya Unique wants to be. Oh, okay. thinking about that. Now, let's bring it all the way down. Let's, let's bring it real bite-sized small. Right now, in order to solve a problem and utilize my gifts, I can do UGC creation, right? So I can develop my content creation skills and utilize my skills that I know how to edit. I know how to create content. I'm a brand strategist. I graduated with my marketing degree. So I can, I'm fire at creating content. Why not me? You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay, that could be something that I leverage, right? Another thing, I write newsletters, right? Did you know that you can get paid from writing a newsletter? How? How can you get paid, Demaya? Because it's called ad placement. So when you show up, right, you showing up on your social media, you building your newsletter, right? People are signing up for that. People are reading that. If you get partnerships and you put ads in your newsletter or in your blog or whatever the case may be, honey, you'll get paid. Okay, that's why I said we got to talk about money, because when it comes down to money, I'm telling you, it's really just about being a solutionist. Right. And I don't know if this this stem from growing up and I was a creative that literally had to make something out of nothing. But I'm like, OK, if we want this right, we, we want this phone. What we got to do to get this phone, whether I got to sell Twizzlers for 10 cents a piece. I can go to the store. I can get a, a 24 pack. And I really did this, y'all. In elementary school, they almost kicked me out. I got a 24 pack of Twizzlers. Okay. I got them Twizzlers. I went to school. I had the little Ziploc bags. We didn't really have good snacks at school. So guess what I did? I took my pack of Twizzlers, put them in the little Ziploc bags, and I sold the mugs for 10 cents a piece. Okay. And so we, that's when, you know, Candy, I don't want to say it was a dollar because it wasn't that cheap. Like, I ain't that old. You know what I'm saying? I was born in 2000. I'm only about to be 24. So, I mean, you know, inflation definitely been inflationary. However, I did what I needed to do. But it's really just a couple of math. You know, one plus one equals two. You know what I'm saying? It's really just math when it comes down to money. And so when it comes down to monetizing your gifts, it's really just a math equation. It's really just a math equation. Well, because if you got gift plus problem equals money, I'm going to give it to you as simple as that. Gift plus problem equals money. Right. And we're just talking about this as a stepping stone to what we want, what the big, big dream is. Right. Diversifying your gifts. OK, so. I was giving you an example of me. I have this big dream. But then right now I'm in a place where I had to slow down because it was like, hold on, Dubai, you're going too fast. You're trying to move the needle and do all of these things, but it's just it's just getting confusing. And you just need to slow down a little bit because you're burning yourself out. Right. So I had to slow down. And I'm like, I'm in a season where being transparent, I'm like, OK, you need to really start learning to leverage your gifts because the brand is Demai unique. Right. The brand is you. So what gifts can you leverage? You're good at speaking. You're good at teaching. You're good at coaching. Right. You good at all of this stuff. So then we got then and you're good at designing. Right. So then we got intentional living planner, which if you ain't know now, you know, volume two is dropping tonight. Just design that. What is that? Passive income. OK, a product. Something that can be monetized. But here's the thing. I didn't just go on Canva because here's the thing. Sometimes we'd be thinking, oh, I could just go create this little planner on Canva. Just add the little dates and do 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 boop boop and go sell it. And we think, oh, it's going to fly off the shelves. Here's the problem. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You can't do that because here's why. Here's why you can't do that. And here's why they'll give you the strategy on TikTok. Here's how to create a planner in like 10 minutes and then just sell on Etsy. First and foremost, you have to solve a problem. Why? Because there's already planners out here. So when I created this planner and I had to go back to the drawing board, because I'm like, okay, everybody got all these cute planners. But guess what? Guess what? This planner? Honey, this planner gonna help you live a balanced, purposeful, and in alignment 
type of life. Okay, this is not just for your reminders. This ain't just for no doctor's appointment. Honey, this is to make sure your life is intentional. Okay, and it's for my visionaries, right? It ain't just for no anybody, everybody. So I got specific on the problem I was solving, right? And, and how did I do that? I had to do a little research. I had to see what was available and what was everybody else's problem that they wanted to solve. Because I seen planners that included everything from the budget to the this to the that. And I said, that's not my goal with this planner. My It's called the Intentional Living Planner for a reason. Because we're trying to help you live intentional, right? We're trying to help you balance your life. Get, get good with time management, okay? We, well, that's what we're trying to what are we trying to do? Excuse me. That's what we're trying to do. So I had to get very specific. That, that's how you create something that sells, right? So when it comes down to monetizing your gifts, maybe you have a gift to design or maybe a gift to think critically or whatever the case may be. Not only is it about the gift that you have, it's about how you position it. So same thing for this planner. I had a gift to design, but not only that, I have a, a gift to create curriculum. I have get that. Those are the type of gifts I have. Again, it all relies on my brain. The left side, if you, you want to be for real, the left hemisphere, creativity. Okay. That's the, the gift I have. Right. But it's also in alignment with my big plan because to my unique, I show up to show you that if I did it, you could do it too. You can figure out what your identity is who you are, what your purpose is, what your passions are, and you can walk in your vision, okay? You can be the visionary and you can carry out the vision, right? That's my the big plan. And so a little segment of that is teaching you how to live intentionally. Guess what produced that? The intentional living planner, right? Where I zoned in on the problem I want to solve. Y'all follow me? So that's number three. What problem are you solving, friend? Because you can't solve them all, right? You got to pick a lane. You got to find a lane. Now, I ain't saying you can't be multi-passionate, multi okay? Because I just told you I'm the coach. I'm the teacher. I'm the, I'm the, I'm all of these things, right? Got my hands at everything, okay? That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is when it comes down to how you position your gift, you have to get specific. You can't say surface level because there's other people out here that's doing it. You know what I'm saying? So if you're following me, put got it in the comments. Got it. So we can move forward. Y'all, I'm hyped. I'm sweating. I just imagine all eight of us just at this boardroom table. You know what I'm saying? Or we got one, got it. Let's get two more. And then we can go to number four. I'm telling you, it's all going to start connecting. We got two, got it. Thank you, Danita and Sakia. Or Sakaya, I don't know if it's Sakaya or Sakia. But thank you. One more. Y'all, also, thank you, India. Prepare your questions. Because I'm, I'm telling y'all, we got to open up the floor. I'm going to try to go through these next ones. I ain't going to try to talk after each one. Okay, number four. Connect the dots. So now I want you to draw like three circles. Okay. Just hold on for a second <laughs> before you draw them on, on your paper. I want the first two circles to overlap like this, right? Like how, like a regular Venn diagram. So like one circle and then another circle that overlap. And then your third circle is going to be like in the middle of both of them. I don't know if any of that just made sense. But basically, you want three circles that overlap. So it's going to be like an overlap here and an overlap there. Let me know if that makes sense. I, I can't pull up my iPad or I would. Hold on, let me see. I don't know. I, I'm, new, I'm new on this, so I don't know how to do it. So I ain't trying to mess nothing up. But you need three circles. Because now it's time to connect the dots. And essentially, I want you to find the overlap between what you're good at, right? What you're good at, so your gifts. I want your gifts to be in one, one circle. Your gifts to be in one circle. The next circle, I want you to put the different types of jobs you can do 
with those gifts. It doesn't mean I'm not talking about a nine to five. I'm just saying the specific job that you could do with that gift or what you could produce from that gift. Right. So whether that's a blog, whether it's a digital product, whatever the case may be. Right. What can you produce from this gift that you have? And then that third circle, I want it to be, how can you help others? And that's the problem that you're solving. Problem that you're solving. And you can do this for one gift at a time, just so it's not overwhelming. Just so it's not overwhelming. Because I'm talking to y'all. I know like my gifts off the top of my head. <clears throat> So I can give y'all like, oh, I have a writing gift. I create a curriculum for a boot camp. Da, da, da. Oh, I have a teaching gift. Like I can give it off the top to you. But I want you to really work on one gift at a time. Because even if you walk away from here and you're just monetizing one gift, that, that's fine. Because you're walking away from here making money. So I don't want you to be confused. That's the thing about having multiple passions. The problem isn't that you have multiple passions. The problem is how you handle. How you juggle. You know what I'm saying? So. Again, um, I want you to have three circles because now it's time to connect the dots. Two circles that overlap here, then a circle that overlap. Make sure all three circles are overlapping because, again, we're here to connect the dots. So I want you to put in the first, first circle what you're good at, what you love, your gift. I want you to identify the gift. Then I want you to identify in the second bubble the different types of jobs you can do with this gift because we're working to monetize the gift. OK. And then the third bubble will be the problem you can solve for your audience. Problem you can solve. So first circle, your gift. Second circle, the jobs, what your gift can produce. Let's let's put that there. What your gifts can produce. So now first circle, the gift. Second circle, what your gift can produce, meaning the jobs you can do, blah, 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 blah. And then the third circle, the problem you're solving or how you can help others with your gift. Problem you're solving. I'll put it in the comments too. So first circle, the gift. Second circle, Uh, what the gift produce? <laughs> I was like, what did I say? <laughs> okay. AKA the jobs you can do with the gift. And then third circle, the problem you're solving with the gift. AKA how you can help others. And I'll give y'all an example why y'all writing those, why y'all writing it down. Okay, so for example, let's start with the gift, the gift circle. I wish I could really have a whole whiteboard like, right here. <laughs> but the gift, okay? Next time I got y'all, next time I got y'all, the gift. If this is me, let's do strategy, right? I'm a strategist. What does that mean? Somebody can come to me and say, hey, these are my ideas. This is what I want to do. That bop, 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 bop. And just spill out their whole heart of beans. And I can organize everything they just said into a plan. I got the gift. I got that gift specifically. So strategy. That's my gift. The jobs that I can do with that gift or what this gift could produce I could produce a digital product, which I have called the Visionpreneur Journal, where I help you take your millions of ideas that's in your head and put them on paper. OK, so I, I'm telling y'all how to monetize y'all gifts by showing y'all I've already done it. Right. I'm, I'm just saying. So the second, the jobs, again, what it can produce a digital product, teaching people how to take the millions of ideas from their head and put it on paper and make it make sense. Right. I also could do pick my brain calls or pick my creativity calls where I just sit, sit on the call, I listen to you vent, and I help you organize your thoughts and help you organize your ideas, right? Where I do it live and we could talk face to face, right? That's another way. Another thing I could do is consult. So I can go into business and say, hey, I see you struggling with X, Y, and Z. 
I can, you know, you if you let me talk to you for a second or, you know, for a couple, I'll meet with you once a week or whatever, and we can discuss, you know, X, Y, and Z within your business, and I can give you, you know, all these, you know, strategies to help you grow your business, make more money, blah, 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 right? So I can consult. Um, what else can I do with the strategy gift? Um, I mean, I could write a book. Um, I could... Um, there's so many different things, but I'm gonna just stop there. So I, I put, I said, digital product, write a book. I can consult. Um, yeah, and I'm gonna stop there. So those are different different things that I could do with that gift or what that gift could produce, right? Now, the third circle is what problem am I solving? So I already started with just the digital product, how I created the Visionpreneur Journal, right? So that was something that my gift produced. In bubble three, when I was creating that journal, what I, the main goal I wanted to solve was the fact that visionaries, dreamers, creators, entrepreneurs have millions of ideas in their head. And the reason they can't start is because it's in their head and not on paper. They can't get it to make sense. The math ain't mathing. So let me create a product that does that. How did I know that was a problem? Because... I've talked with so many different people, right? I research. And then also, I want to give y'all this biggest hint. I was the <laughs> I was the person that was there. So you don't even gotta think too hard. You don't even gotta go search too far. Solve the problem that you had. So fill the gap, be the bridge that you didn't have. Let's start. The, I'm telling y'all, I'm trying to make y'all make it as easy as possible. Be the bridge you didn't have. When I thought back on my journey, when I was first starting, right? What, what didn't I have? What, what was my struggle? I had a million ideas in my head. I had this big dream of what I wanted it to be, but no starting place. So guess what I did? I created a product to help you turn your millions of ideas in your head into a profitable business by taking all these millions of ideas and acknowledging it, right? Organizing it, but having a starting place. Okay. Yes. That digital product is already out. Yes. The link is in my bio on Instagram. Um, but I think I also tagged it on the, in the description of this video as well on live. And then I'm also going to put it in the comments. <clears throat> But yes, so that's that's an example right there. The gift, what this gift can produce, and the problem I'm solving. And that's what you want to do for your gift. And we can do that he, on, on live. I can do literally sit here and draw the three circles and help you work through. So that's why I said live high seat coaching. I'm about to open up the, the floor. Live high seat coaching, I want to help you. Three circles. We can fill that those three circles out. Fill those three circles out. What's the gift? What can you do with that gift? And what's the problem you want to solve? Try to get this link. Let me know in the comments. Got it. If you got number three or number four, connect the dots. Well, that's the circle activity. Connect the dots. So the gift, what the gift can produce and the problem you are solving. Danita, let me know if you got that link. Mm -mm -mm. All right, got it. How many people are here? Nine, let's get a couple more goddess, like two more, and then we can go to number five. I'm telling you number five and number six is easy, and then I'm gonna open it up. I'm gonna open up the floor. Two more goddess. Because I really want to answer y'all questions. I'm trying to help y'all get some money. <laughs> I'm trying to help y'all get some money. Okay? Um, because period. Because girl, you're gifted. You are gifted. Okay? Um, <clears throat> all right, we got two got it. One more and then we can move forward. One more got it. Why y'all still getting it? I'm drink my water. <clears throat> All right. Thank you, India Group. Okay, so number five. 
Number five is identify what people will pay for it and how much. This is where a little bit of research come in. What will people pay for it? What will people pay for it? What is people already paying for stuff like this? Right? So like, for example, if I was going to see UGC creation, right? How much, how much are brands paying for this? Is the starting pay like 200? I know they do gifted collabs, all the things. Maybe you could do that to build your portfolio or whatever. But I want to know how much are people paying for it. So like for eBooks, because sometimes we, here's the thing. Sometimes we don't do research and we don't see how much people are paying for. It. So then when we set our prices, we're just like, oh, this is going to be $20. This is going to be $15. Mind you, people out here making $100. Right? Now, again, you still, again, you want to take into note when you are making your prices, you want to take into note your experience, your value, your worth, right? Because sometimes, like, for example, you can have all of this marketing experience, but maybe it's you are starting a new venture with your gift. So, like, for example, I can have six, seven, eight years of marketing experience, but maybe I'm just now starting to consult, right? That does just because I'm a beginner consultant doesn't mean that I don't know what I'm talking about. Doesn't mean that the value is not there. Doesn't mean that the worth is not there, right? And so that doesn't mean that when I start out, I'm going to be starting out at $25 an hour. Absolutely not. I want to know how much people are paying for it. I want to know how much people are willing to pay for it. Because how, how many of us know that sometimes we can attract the wrong people because of the price we set? So you setting $25 and you wondering why you got the audience you got. Because you're not talking, you're not talking to the people that got money. That's, then that's just strategy right there, okay? So number five is identify what people will pay for it. How much? How much? What is it going for? So we're talking about the solution here. How much will people pay for the solution? People pay for solutions, right? So when people aren't paying you, you have to think about, am I offering them a solution? Am I positioning my gift as a solution? Because people pay for solutions. They do. They do. So when you question in your heart, mm, should I be paying? Should I be charging for this? People pay for solution. If you offer a solution, so maybe it's to help them, you know, uh, grasp the information better, or maybe you're 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 helping them, you know, skip all of these steps you had to take, and you're giving them all of these steps right here that you it took you years to learn. That's convenience, right? People pay for solutions. I want y'all to get that in y'all head. They do. You do, friend. You do. You pay for solutions every day. <laughs> okay. Like I easily could have charged for this. How do I know? Because all of y'all who have gotten on this live today are looking for a solution. What do you want to know? How to monetize your gifts. Problem. Solution. Problem. Solution. And what helps you as well is knowing interest, like having people show you that they're interested. And I'm here to tell you, again, I got that marketing expertise, customer psychology. Okay, I understand it. And here's the thing. People show interest when they ask you questions. Okay, when, when, they, when they come in to inquire, right? There's different ways that they, they show interest. And so the moment they show interest is the moment that they, that's another dollar that can be made. And like I was saying in that newsletter, I was talking to one of my friends and I was telling her, she was like, oh, I don't feel like I could charge for this. I said, well, are they asking you questions in your DM? How many of us know all these DMs? Our money. You asking me all this question. If I'm worthy enough to ask a question, I'm worthy enough to get paid. Amen. <laughs> Let the church say amen. Okay. And no, again, it's not all about money. That's not my point here. But I'm talking to creatives and entrepreneurs who are trying to make a living. 
off of your gift, off of doing what you love to do. You can't serve, right? You can't serve and make more of an impact without money. It, it, it's not going to work. Right. How, how do I know that? Because I'm the giver friend too, friend. I want to give everything away for free. That's why half of the things I talk about, even now, I'm showing up for free. Right. This is my life. This is how I live. This is how I pay the bills. I'm showing up for free. Right. Because the reality is I am here for impact. I want to see you win, friend. I do. I really do. But you have to have balance. As a creative, as an entrepreneur, you have to have balance, a balance of passion and a balance of profit. Because if one outweigh the other, you're going to be greedy or you're going to be broke. You're going to be greedy or you're going to be broke if you operate at either extreme. You're going to be passionate and broke or you're going to be greedy. And I mean, you're going to have money, but who wants to have a greedy heart posture? You know what I'm saying? When your whole focus is on money. You don't even care about helping other people and pulling other people up, being a bridge. You said, forget that. That's where you just start taxing people just because. You know what I'm saying? It ain't about worth. It ain't about none of that. You just greedy. Right? You just, you want to step on other people. You just want to get to the top because it's about you. You know what I'm saying? So we don't want to be either, either or. We don't want to be a greedy and we don't want to be broke. We want to be in the middle where we're balancing our passion and our profit. Okay, we're passionate and paid. Come on, put it in the chat. I'm passionate and I'm paid. I'm passionate and I'm paid. Okay, because listen, we, there's money that's being left on the table. Why? Because a lot of times we're not considering it. We're not considering money. We got the dream. We got the impact. We got the, the, the zeal and the, the passion and all of these things. But how many of us here today want to be passionate and paid? So we can impact more people, right? Because that's wisdom right there. That's wisdom. That's wisdom, okay? So identify what people will pay for it. I don't even know how we got on this tangent, but somebody needs to hear it, okay? Identify what people will pay for and how much will they pay. That's number five. And number six, build out the idea. Start building out the idea. So that's why I said work on one thing at a time. And that's what I want to do today. We're going we're to start building out this idea. Right? Because you got to build it out. So, again, like I gave you an example, right? I'm a strategist. The gift is the strategy, right? I created a product to help you take the millions of ideas in your head and, and, and get them on paper and organize them. That was what, I, that was what my gift produced. Why did I produce that? Because again, visionaries and creators have millions of ideas in their head that they need to get on paper, that they need organized, that they need a starting point for. So I created this product. You see how I worked on one thing at a time? I can go back to this strategy gift and say, you know what? Now I want to do pick my brain calls. Why? Because people need to talk to me laugh. They need a little my unique laugh. You know what I'm saying? I want to help people laugh. Right? So I can utilize this same gift and produce different things because it's multifaceted. The gift is multifaceted. You are multifaceted. So you have to start by building the idea out. How did I build this idea out? Again, the gift was the strategy. The idea is in that second bubble that we talked about. Remember three circles. What your gift can produce is the idea. For me, that was the digital product. That was the visionpreneur journal. That was the idea that I built out to help the visionary execute their vision. Right? How did I build that out? Again, you, you, you lay it out, you outline, you, you know, put the curriculum together, you design it. There's multiple different parts to build it out. But you build it out and you start. Of course, you got to market, especially if you're going into digital digital products and all the things. You got to market, you got to position yourself, all those things. But that's how that's how to, that's the, the simple six things of how to monetize your gifts. How to monetize your gifts. All right, I want to help some people. So put got it in the chat if y'all got all six. Again, 
number one, I'll put it, actually copy it and put it in there. So that I don't have to keep repeating myself. Once you got all six, put got it in the chat. I'm about to copy it. I don't know if I say this is not copyright. Hold on. Let me add the numbers. One, two, All right, three, four, five, and six. All right, get y'all questions ready. I don't know how the how them comments just posted. Did it post right, y'all? If not, it'll be in the in the uh, description. All right. Put got it in there and then we can move forward and I'll post the link. I'll post the link to bring y'all on the stage. If you want to come on stage, you can put your comment in the um, chat, but it's a little easier to hear what you what you're trying to say and, and, and get the deets. I be needing the deets sometimes. So once I get two to three got it, we can I'll put the link in the chat. Let me get some water. We're going to do this for, for like 15 minutes. So maybe we could take like three or four. Got it. Got it. All right. Got one. Got it. Can I get two more? Got it. Please. Mm, 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 mm. Y'all, this popcorn is so good. They knew what problem they were solving. Mm -hmm. They did. And did. Thank you, Danita Grill. One more got it. All right. Thank you, Joanna. All right. Let's get going. Let's get going. Let me post the link. I'm going to post the link in the chat. Again, if you don't want to hop on, you can put your questions in the question or in the comments. That's the link, though. Once you come on stage, I will pop you on and you can talk. Questions, questions. Y'all, it is literally hot in this room. Oh my goodness. Oh, we got a one, Joanna. Hey, girl. Hold on, let me see. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, can, can you, you hear, hear me? me? Yes. All right, I'm ready for you, girl. Okay. My question is, I feel like every time I want to leverage my gift and I find a job to do it within, I try to figure out the solution, like try to figure out the problem that I'm trying to solve. And I don't, I, I'm too broad on it. So it's very mm. surface, level, surface level. And I try to, I dig deep, right? And right when I think that I'm right there, I'm not right there. And I, I find something else out and I'm like, okay, I don't even know where this is going now because now I just, it yeah. just was like a huge curb ball. And so I get stuck and I'm like, all right, well, I don't even know what to do anymore because yeah. Yeah. Okay. So essentially what you're saying is you kind of get lost in the sauce when it comes down to the problem you're trying to solve. Like you start surface level and then you kind of dig deeper, but are you saying you get lost 
and the digging deeper where you really don't get a pinpoint that you want to focus on. Right. And I just, so for instance, um, I'll just say like, I want to, like, one of the things that I want to do is I want to, um, tap into like content creation. Right. And I know that Mm -hmm. I want to help at first I thought that I wanted to hone in on mothers, but then I was like, no, there's a bigger picture to this. There's, it's actually women. So then I'm thinking, okay, it's, yeah. I want to target women that have like this independent mindset to help them realize that we do have to be like codependent with God and realize that, mm-hmm. you know, this whole feministic movement is not what you really want. So mm-hmm. in that, I'm like, okay, so what solution am I am I solving? Am I solving the fact that they really need healing? Or am I solving the fact that mm-hmm. there's a mindset shift that needs to happen? Right. Because a lot is happening, particularly within them. So, okay, let me put it this way. Be- so sometimes you can have a problem that's a little big meaning you're going to have to create multiple things as a solution. Mm-hmm. So instead of saying, like so like you said, it could be you targeting the healing that they need to heal, or it could be you targeting more so their mindset and just how okay. they overview life. So it's like, what if you create solutions? Because, I mean, when you think about it, independent women, whether that's independent Black women or whatever the case may be, right? Right. They could have, and I can even use me, for example, honey, I had daddy issues. So not only do you need to work with, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Uh, Like not only there's multiple different facets that could go into the reasoning behind why a woman has this independent mindset. So what I would say is identify those reasons as like the basically Okay, you have this bigger problem, which is the independent mindset, but that independent mindset feeds off of smaller problems. Right. So then you would then have to create solutions that could target those things or just pick one. You don't have to necessarily be a solution for everything. You could just say, I want to just focus on creating a solution for, for daddy issue wounds. Okay, gotcha. So that's what I would say for that. Um... But yeah. But as far as like, so for instance, I'll give another example. Like I'll be, I'll pick daddy issues, right? And then I'll Mm -hmm. think about daddy issues. And for some reason, I'll lose, I'll lose sight of that. And I'll think about, instead of like honing on daddy issues, I'll go back to mindset. And so I'm trying Mm -hmm. to figure out, because then I get confused about, the main point. Does that make mm, sense? Yes. Because I so feel like it is it is broad and then I just get like jumbled up and I'm like, all right, I gotta start from scratch again. I gotta write it down all over again. And it becomes the same thing, but I just I'm trying to picture it in my brain where I can actually digest the problem or the topic in a way that I could understand so that I know that whoever is consuming that content also understands. And Mm -hmm. so, um, yeah. Okay. So let me, let me help you. Let me help you here. So from listening to you, I now want to know what is your big plan when it, in regards to creating, because of course creating content is a stepping stone. Yeah. What is the, more so bigger plan because I want to know what's the bigger message like what is the message that you are trying to convey to your audience so one is um pretty much like healing from like I said like that independent mindset and the root Mm -hmm. of that being um you know whatever trauma like the upbringing childhood trauma whether it's relationship issues societal Mm -hmm things that have played a role Um, and then using my gifts, you know, like how you said. So that's kind of like the the root, but like helping women heal from that so that they can then Mm -hmm. 
prosper, um, being mothers, being wives, being a friend, mm -hmm. whatever the case may be. Okay. Okay. So how do you connect in, in that? Like what, 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 why you, that's my, so this is going to tie into your gifts. Like why are you the person to do this and spread this message? Cause I feel like for so long. So when I was growing up, I had a very independent mindset and there were things that, um, you know, I didn't have my parents growing up. So I had to just fight. It was like all my life I had to fight, right? You're a black woman. Mm -hmm. You're, you know, just trying to get through. Um, and right. so when I got married, I was very independent. I was like, I want, I want things to go my way. I didn't really submit. Submit was like a curse word. And so right. now that I understand what submission is, now that I understand that, you know, being surrendering to God, um, now that I understand what it means to actually walk with God, I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. how can I share this with someone else to understand that like, you know, putting your family first is okay. And you can mm -hmm. pursue, you know, a career, you can pursue other things, but making sure that your home is in order so that everything else can flow from it. And so that's really the message that I want women to know is that like career doesn't come over cash. Like, mm -hmm. like, motherhood comes like white being a wife all of those things come first making sure your home's in order and then you can go ahead and go do that because god will bless it afterwards yeah. i want that message to um go out and understanding and then when you come to like societal stuff it's like you know um like feminism and then like race how you know just like valuing ourselves more valuing the people that we have around us and not thinking that we have to be always a crab in a barrel like hurting other people and like just like how we treat men and all that stuff because yeah. like our marriage if we're hurting you know our, our spouses and people who are around us so that's kind of like the overarching theme of all of it okay so Okay, now I got more insight because when when you were talking and I don't know if you've done this, but what I want you to do is kind of draw a timeline because now we're thinking about your audience um, because like you have this bigger message. But when it comes down to independent, like independent black women specifically, like we said, that's a bigger problem that's funneling off of smaller problems. Right. right. And so what I want you to do is create a timeline using you as an example, right? Because you are trying to help women get to where you are. And a lot of the time, I think sometimes when it comes down even to like content creation, and sometimes we can get, like we can overthink it so much. Like, what am I supposed to say? What, like, you know, like, I don't want to say too much. Like, I want to make sure the information is digestible and all of those. And we kind of just get warped into this like spiral. And what you have to do is kind of think about it as if, like I try to give you like really feasible examples. Like think about it as if you just now meeting a person, you not on this first conversation about to tell them from A to Z, right? You're going to build a story. And the thing is too, like when it comes down to your message, you're, you're going to, it's like, you're going to keep saying it until you're blue in the face. And it's going to sometimes feel like you hear being repetitive, but that like, that's the point because it has a, underlying message right but like we said you're tackling a big problem in bite-sized pieces but it has a storyline okay, and you're and what you're doing is talking to that woman who was where you started and that's what I want that's where I want you to start so whether that's you talking, you talking to, and how the, the simplest way you could, that I'll always look at it. If you don't have nobody else as a visual point that you can, or reference that you could pull from, you could pull from yourself. So think about you before you got married. You can even go, if you want to, you can go all the way back to when you was a teenager. Right. And you can start there. And so you want to, again, follow this timeline. So you're building a story with your audience, because a lot, even when, when you think about trauma, you don't just go in and talk to somebody like you need to stop being independent. 
Because, honey, that baby, that's deeply rooted. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, that ain't something they're going to be able to overcome overnight. And so that way, once you put that timeline there, again, where you started versus where you are. This is who you're talking to. But you have to even go back and realize that you as a woman evolved in its season, right? And so you're able to then, okay, what was my mindset at the very beginning? What was my mindset when I overcame a little bit and I got married? What was my mind? You know what I mean? Like you have to like be able to address, like mindset is a great big topic, but how you're even able to break that down is again, thinking about this woman going through this timeline. The goal is where you are. And of course, you know, we're all still evolving. We're all still growing. So as you grow, this timeline going to extend. You know what I'm saying? So, but again, the timeline right now is where you are and where you started. And so mindset expands from where you are and where you started. Gotcha. And so every month, just think about content in general, every month, like for example, one month you talk about mindset, but what, t- what mindset are you referring to? Are you referring to the mindset when you were 16, 17, 18 versus the mindset when you got married? Versus the mindset where you are now, like what mindset, like what, what in mindset are you referring? Cause even mindset, like, are you talking about, you know, um, there's different things, imposter syndrome, right? Are you talking about survival mode in mind? Like there's so many things that you can talk about regarding mindset. And so that's kind of what I want you to think about to kind of paint you a picture for that. Okay. It's a lot because the dream be big. Right. And when you break it down and you start putting, you know, visual to it, it's like, okay, I like sometimes you can feel this pressure to also like get out everything and talk about everything. Like you can even literally create a podcast that's just on healing, right? Like for women. You know what I mean? Like, and that just be your topic. Right. You could just put a mind or a podcast together just on mindset for independent black women or just independent women in general. Like that could be your t- because it's so large of a topic. Right. And so that's what I would say. That's why I do series all the time, because it's like, I mean, I can I can talk about identity in so many different ways. Right. But I'm a I'm a switch it up and we're going to come and talk about it a different way. Because there's so many, there's so many different facets of it. And so I forgot what your original question was, but I hope this helps. So if I, so here's another, uh, another thing before I I jump off. Um, I'm just going to do the one that I'm kind of like, I'm going to be working on soon. It's just, Mm -hmm. so one thing is like writing. And so I was like, I wanted to create, you know, a type of devotional for um, women who didn't really, don't really know or Mm -hmm. have explored the possibility of things being Mm -hmm. rooted and kind of like uprooting those things and kind of like going through different, um, it was like bringing through, bringing them through that kind of like that timeline through the devotional Mm -hmm. and so what it hold on wait a second before you continue i want you to think about this don't try to solve too big of a problem okay and here's why i say that because i could have created when i created the visionpreneur journal i could have said i want to take them from the millions of ideas in their head all the way to starting their business right it's not feasible you from one product, you do not want to try to solve all day problems. So maybe what you'll start with is a devotional to just show them or, you know, show them that things are deeply rooted. Maybe that that, that that's where you start. And then you can have another devotional that focuses on something else. And then another because de- they're they, like, OK. I'm going to paint it like this. Just imagine right now with me that there was multiple Joannas, right? There's a Joanna, the present Joanna. There's a 16-year-old Joanna. There's a 20 Joanna. Whatever age you got married, that Joanna, right? Four Joannas. 
they're all at that space right now, present time. Right. You don't want to create a product that's for all four of Joanna's. Right. You're not going to you're not going to get all of their attention. It's too much. Right. You're going to overwhelm your audience because they're going to be like, are you talking to me? Is it me? Am I, am I fit in? Like, you know what I mean? So what you want to do is whoever the product will be best for. That's why I said create a timeline. And you can put a picture of you. You know, I'm, I'm creative. So you can get pictures, th- get throwback pictures. I want you to create a real timeline, get throwback pictures of you at each stage. OK. And I want you to be, think like, OK, I'm creating this product. This is the devotional I want to create. Which one of these Joannas would be the best fit for this product? Once you identify that, then you say, OK, this is the Joanna I'm going to talk to. This is who I want to talk to. I want to think about their pain points. I want to think like I really want to highlight to them because I know that I'm talking to them. If an outlier, somebody that's, you know, somebody else by cool. But I know I'm talking to the beginner, Joanna. Gotcha. Who don't even know she a problem. OK, don't even know. <laughs> like, Is it me? Honey, yes, it's you. You are the problem. OK. So that's kind of what I want you to think. So once you create your timeline of all the Joannas, then you think about your product and your devotional, because then you can really create a devotional for each one of them. That makes sense. That makes so much more sense. All right, I'm going. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Period. So I'm looking for four devotionals, okay? We just went from one devotional to four, and that's just four times more money. Copy. Period. Got it. Awesome. You're welcome. Okay, let me see. All right, cool, cool, cool. We got time for maybe one more. Y'all, I told y'all don't leave the same way y'all came, okay? One more. I think I posted the link. Posted the link. Let's talk. I want to know what the gift is. What can your gift produce and the problem you solving? Joanna just came on here with one devotional. She left away with four. Let's talk. Hey, India Grill. Let me add you. Hold on. Hi. Hey. How hey, are you? Good, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Great, great, great. This awesome. has been so good. I love your content, and I'm glad that I'm able to like connect with you on this space. I'm so inspired by you. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> All um, right, Miss Girl, let me know or fill me in. Where you at? What you working with? So, um, I you know I sort of said it in the comments, like I I'm good at a lot of things. Um, I know that I have multiple gifts. I'm often reminded of that. God is good. He you know makes it. Um, a lot of things just come naturally to me. And um, I love media. I love making content. I've always loved photography. I've always loved videography. Um, and I, I don't mind doing it for other people. Now, one of my prayers mm-hmm. was um, I, I thought that I wanted to have like my own like marketing firm. So I kind of mm-hmm. put myself and. Uh, God blessed me with a client and I discovered probably after about two weeks working with her, like, oh no, I don't want to work with clients specifically. Like, this is crazy. You are asking for a bit more than that I can even do right now. Um, I, I bit off m- more than I could chew, but again, it was, God allowed me to see, you know, plainly. This is how mm-hmm. I want to show. Um, for, as far as my career, uh, what I do right now, I work in property management. I'm a, a leasing professional. I do the marketing for the property that I work at. And I enjoy that. I really do. So as we were kind of working through, you know, one through six, one of the things was, you know, what space can I do this in? What job can I do? And so a goal would be to like merge to the marketing team. And I see God like making way for me to get there. Uh, my manager is like, you know, really put me in the forefront to help show my skill set. So I'm blessed to know that. But I know that working a nine to five and being with a, a corporation isn't what I want to do for the rest of my life. 
mm-hmm. if I'm really, really honest, I kind of want to capitalize on being like nicheless, like being a multi talented person. Um, mm-hmm. I, I like to. I got, I did a sewing class. I actually really enjoy that. Um, I like candle making. I love, you know, doing film, like, you know, with the film camera. So I'm wondering if, I'm wondering if you think that that is a reasonable, a reasonable thing to kind of like capitalize on being a brown Mm -hmm. girl on social media and making content that doesn't really, yesterday's post doesn't match today's post. (laughs) <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I love that. Um, no, I love that. And I, I do believe it's possible. Um, I'm I'm a huge believer, like whatever dream that you have and that God has allowed you to envision, I believe is attainable. Um, it, it, it don't it may not make sense. It may not fit somebody else's box or somebody else's standard. Um, but I believe we was called and created to create our own box. And you know what I mean? Come outside the lines, if you will. Um, and so I do believe it's possible. I think it's about how you position it. Um, and and when it comes down to making this a full time thing, I think it's very important to focus on how you can monetize, right? So being multi-passionate, being multi-hyphenated, being multi-disciplinary, um, I think it's definitely something that people are, um, it's, it's happening more, if that makes sense. Like I see it evolving because people are like, wait, I don't want to just be a fitness guru. I, I, I'm much more than that, right? Like I, I'm, I'm not just interested in that. So what I will say is what I did for my brand is focus on what you want to be known for, right? Like build a brand, like in building your brand, focus on what you want to be known for. When you show up, understand why you're showing up. Like what, what is your purpose in showing up? What, what do you want to happen in the lives of your audience, your viewers? Um, And then that's where you'll find even solutions to offer them. If that makes sense. Oh, that makes sense. Like as you're explaining, um, as you've explained everything, you know, um, even for uh, the previous uh, beautiful girl, um, I can see how, like you, you, you totally practice what you preach. And that's kind of what I look for <laughs> when I'm taking note from someone. So I, I, this is, this is divine, but I definitely see that when I think of Demaya unique, like first and foremost, I think of someone like immediately, I know that she's a believer and, and she's passionate about um, bringing a vision to life. And, and so, no, that makes perfect sense. And I, I definitely, that that's really good help. I think that kind of just sets the precedence on what each thing will look like, each each talent, regardless of whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Yep. And like thinking about like, again, what you want. So like, and I think, because sometimes it can feel like, man, I have so many passions. Like you said, I have so many things that I'm good at, right? But at the end of the day, Yes, you're you're multi-talented. Yes, you're multifaceted and all of those things. And God, God is great. I mean, every good gift come from above. We love that. The thing about it is, is like because it's you, you have to really hone in on the you factor, right? So how does your story talk? Because anybody else could have these gifts, right? Anybody else can have these passions. Anybody else could have what you have, the capabilities you have, but it's you. So thinking about, okay, why do you show up? What do you want to be known for? What do you want? What do you, and and sometimes it's thinking about what do I want out of my life? What do I want out of my career, right? Like, what do I want that to look like? And really getting those specifics on paper. Because like I heard you say, I don't want, I learned I didn't want a marketing agency. I learned that, you know, I love creating content for other people. But agency, nah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I, I love, you know, you you were able to identify, okay, I like this, don't like that. 
I, I may can do this. I like a little photography, like a little videography, like this, like that, but I don't like that. You know what I'm saying? And so I think it's very important to like clearly define what you want. Even when you're showing up, like, yes, you're creating content, you're doing all of these things. But like when it comes down to your big plan, what do you want? Take some time to just dream. I do call these like dreaming sessions, like and just sit still, like close your eyes and just what could this be? What is what is the potential? And I think that that's what I love about God is the sky is the limit. Right. I'm here to push you. Because the sky is the limit, right? You have all of these capabilities and like you have this big God, right? The sky is the limit to what your life could be, right? What is, but what is, what did God design when he thought of India? What, what was in his design, right? What is the impact that he wants you to make with your life, right? With, with your gifts. And that's something that you can think about to then that will help you to say, okay, I don't want this, but I do want this. And maybe you're not going to be able to use all of your gifts for whatever that thing is. You know what I mean? Because the cool part about it is because you're multifaceted, you know, you'll maybe have worked this for a couple of years, then pivot, work this for a couple of years. Right. Nobody said it had to be like a straight line. It could be like this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's okay. So, yeah, that's what I would say. Um and once you really think about that, that big plan, what you want, the big dream, and, and you just allow, you know, the, your imagination of what the possibilities are, then you want to think about, OK, if you focus on one gift at a time, how can I monetize it so that I can really do what I love? I could do what I love and I can step away from you know, what I didn't want to do. Kind of thing. OK. No, you've been excellent help I'm so grateful <laughs> of course sis if you have any specific questions I'm here um, like if you had anything that you wanted to more so work through um, but that's what I would say for your overarching question thank you so so much you're welcome I love to get all, all right Did, oh you got it Let's see I think I can Okay. Awesome. All right, y'all. So that was our, what is it called, child? <laughs> our, it was like a mini master class. That was our little class, guys. And I hope that you all enjoyed this class. I enjoyed this class. I, it really blessed me. I'm glad for all of those who hopped on the stage today um, to talk about where they were and just being honest um, about where they were. I hope that you were able to gain from their um, their journey and where they are with their gifts. Um, again, if you have any questions, I do maybe have a couple more minutes. If you have any questions that you want to put in the chat, I don't think I'm going to do one more on stage. But if you have any last minute questions, again, I told you, please. Please do not leave here the way that you came. Get what you need. Okay, get what you need. So any questions? Any questions? Big class. Okay, because listen, we're not playing small. I'm here to tell y'all the sky is the limit. Okay, the sky is the limit. You can do what you love. You can make money from your gifts. Any questions on the table? Questions on anybody's heart? Before we close out, I'm going to close this out with prayer because I forgot to start us off. Any questions? I don't see any. All right. Everybody good. Thank you so much. Proud of you. Thank y'all so much. I love you guys so much. Um, any last minute announcements? I don't think I have too many. We have leaders arise, y'all. I'm about to be out of the office for our quarterly reset. Y'all know, for my friends who know that they've been here for a little minute and sticking with me, y'all know I have, um, or I do quarterly resets at the end of each quarter. So I'm going to be out of the office for this upcoming week because it's the last week of quarter one, y'all. Time is flying. Um, but we'll be back the first week of uh, April, right? Yeah, first week of April, April 1st, 2nd and 3rd at 11.30 p.m. to arise and pray because now it's time to escape from all the responsibilities, okay? And hear from the Lord. 
concerning our lives, our vision, our business, our ideas, all the things. OK, so um, I will also have that link in the description box as well. Other announcement is the Institute of Living Planner did drop tonight. <laughs> It did, it did, it did. Um, and for all those who grabbed volume one, this volume is better, okay, better. I have taken in all of the feedback. I have really zoned in on the problem that I want to solve. And so again, if you're trying to live a balanced life, if you're trying to live a purposeful life and you're trying to live a life in alignment with God's design for your life, honey, this planner is the planner to get, okay? It's not for your, just your appointments and your, it's cute for that too. But again, like I was talking to India, like really honing in on this big plan, like who are you? What do you want? You know what I'm saying? That's what this, uh, not journal, it's like a journal because it's deep and it's reflective. But um, this planner, that is what this planner is for. So Again, um, that link will also be in the description um, box below. But I think that is all that is it. I thank each and every one of you for joining me here today. I really hope that this blessed you. I hope that when you walk away from here, you really can have you really can do what you need to do to really monetize the gifts that you have, because I'm telling you, it is possible. It is possible. And I believe that you can do it. Right. I believe in the potential that God has put on the inside of you. OK, friend, and I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm here to stand beside you. I'm here to be in your corner. I'm here to cheer you on. OK, so, yeah, that's all. That is it. Again, I love y'all. And I'm going to pray us out before we go. So as we bow our heads, Father God, we just thank you. We thank you for who you are. Father, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your long suffering. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day. God, we thank you, Lord God, for every single person that hopped on this live tonight. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, just for our gifts, God. We thank you, Lord God, for the gifts that you have given unto us, oh God. Father, I pray over every single creative, every single visionary, every single entrepreneur, Father. I pray over them. I pray over the ideas that you have given unto them. I pray over the gifts that you have given unto them. And I pray that you would help us, Lord God, with our money mindset, help us with our money management, help us, Lord Jesus, God, because you're not just a, a spiritual God that is just concerned about our souls. But God, you are, oh God, Lord Jesus, oh God, hallelujah, a practical God that gives us the wisdom, hallelujah, and the knowledge that we need to thrive and to be prosperous here on this earth, God. You understand the, 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 the world that we live in. And even though your kingdom hallelujah, is different than, than, than our society, God, we thank you, Lord, that you will still equip us with what we need to be able to operate here. Father, I pray that we would not over-spiritualize, you know, our gifts, our ideas, our businesses, God. But Father, I pray, Lord God, that you would give us that balance, God, that we may be passionate and paid, God. Father, I pray that you would give us clarity over our ideas, God, that you would even, oh God, Lord, because I know that you're the master strategist. You're, you're the, you're the master, Lord God, hallelujah, oh God, business, oh God, owner, father, you, you are a CEO, Lord Jesus, you know how to, to, to organize and to, and to just help us at every stage, Lord. So I pray, Lord God, that you will walk with us, Lord Jesus, as we write out our big plan, as we write out, you know, what we want and our desires. I pray that you will purify our heart, God, that our desires may be pure and that they may be in alignment with your plan and with your will for us, oh God. Father, I thank you that you even consider us, that what our man, that you are mindful of, of us, God. I thank you that we are your daughters, Lord, your sons, God. And I just thank you, oh God, again for this time tonight. And I just pray and I bless every single creative, visionary, and entrepreneur here tonight that from this day, God, that they will be able to monetize their gifts, God, even whether it's a stepping stone to a bigger dream. Father, I pray, Lord God, that they will step out on faith, Lord. Father, Lord Jesus, oh God, to, oh God, monetize the gifts that you have given to them so that they can make the impact, God. In Jesus' mighty name, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. And again, I cover all of us in your name, Jesus. Amen and amen. All right, friends, that is all. That is it. I will see y'all in the beginning of April to pray, okay? Um, I love each and every one of y'all. Again, make sure you sign up for Leaders Arise, grab your Institutional Living Planner because it's time to plan a new quarter, okay? 
And if, you, if you're struggling with all of the ideas in your head, I also have the link for that as well. I love y'all. And I'll see y'all later.